Hi there, welcome to Savory and Sage Homestead. My name is Jen, welcome back to my kitchen today. So we're doing all things kefir here today. I'm gonna to show you how simple it is to make your own kefir at home, milk kefir that is, um, and also take it a step further to make your own kefir cheese, which I'll say it all things in between because the kefir cheese, you can really adjust the texture of what you, what your final product is going to be um, based on what you want to use it for. So you can make your kefir cheese sort of a Greek yogurt texture or a sour cream texture or a cream cheese texture or ricotta cheese texture. It really depends on how much of that whey you strain off. So we're going to go through this. It's super, super simple and it is so, so, so good for you. Uh, if you don't know what kefir is, kefir is basically a fermented um, milk, essentially. It's kind of like a drinkable yogurt, but a healthy drinkable yogurt, not like those little kids drinkable yogurts that really are not healthy at all. They're full of sugar and all kinds of not great stuff. Um, kefir is, you know, um, a powerhouse of probiotics. It's so good for your gut health. Um, it just... It gives you lots of good bacteria into your gut, which helps with your overall gut health, which in turn helps with your overall health. Um, you know, your gut having good gut health and a good gut biome um, is just so good for your immune system and just your overall health in general. So if you're not drinking kefir, you know, check it out a little bit and maybe try it out. It will do you wonders for your gut health. So this is a store-bought kefir that we buy at our local store. So this is an organic kefir. So we find this in the organic section. It's just a plain kefir. You could also get flavored kefirs like blueberry. Uh, we can find most commonly around here. Um, and um, just be careful with flavored kefirs that they don't have, you know, excess amounts of added sugar and that kind of thing. Cause you don't want to, sort of counteract the goodness that you're putting into your gut. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna show you how simple this is. It is so easy to make your own kefir at home and it's it's kind of fun because you can really, um, as you get to kind of know um, how it's gonna taste based on how long you ferment it, you can really adapt the flavor to your suitability. If you like it more sour, you can ferment it a little bit longer, you know? So it's really one of those things that you can customize the flavor of versus buying a store-bought kefir that's already at a set flavor and you can't adjust it kind of thing. So let's get started. I'll show you how easy this is. All right, so this is a batch of kefir that um, has been fermenting and it is ready to strain. So I have to strain it first because we need the grains that are inside of this kefir to make our next batch of kefir. So basically, um, what you're gonna need to make kefir at home, you're gonna need your dairy product. So whether it's a store-bought milk, just a regular milk or a store-bought uh, organic milk or a farm fresh milk, a raw milk, I can imagine must be amazing. We don't have the ability to get raw milk here. Um, we don't have any dairy cows yet, maybe in the future, hopefully. Um, but you're going to need a, a milk product. It is preferable that you use a whole milk. Just It has all the nutrients in it and um, all the fats and the lactose and everything that's good um, to make a kefir. So it is preferred to use a whole milk. You're also going to need a kefir grain or some kefir grains. So um, if you know... If you know somebody who makes their own kefir at home, you can, they can gift you some kefir grains because kefir grains do multiply over time. Um, so, you know, if you're making kefir for a while, you're gonna have an abundance of grains. So you can certainly gift that to somebody else to make their own kefir. Um, you can also order grains online. There's lots of different sources for that. Um, Sometimes you might find a dehydrated kefir grain that you have to rehydrate first, and that's fine. Um, my grains I actually got recently, a few weeks ago, from an Etsy shop. It was a place called Kefir Garden. Um, and they actually sent, uh, it's a, a, like a fresh kefir grain, um, nicely packaged, 
it was enough to make one batch. I had ordered two packs actually, just to make sure I had enough grains and just in case there was an issue with one set of grains that didn't really, weren't really active, I guess. Um, because sometimes the postal system, especially this time of the year with Christmas coming and stuff, um, the postal system can be quite slow. Um, so, you know, those grains are in the mail and sometimes they might not come in the greatest of shape. But in this case, the ones I got from Kiefer Garden, they were great. Um, I will say though, for those, they, this particular company, and I'm sure anywhere that you get Kiefer grains from, probably does the same thing. They had a guide that outlined exactly what to do to kind of, you know, start your own kefir. I will say with those particular grains that I got, and I think it was just because of um, the snow, slowness of the mail system, um, it took a couple of batches. I discarded the first batch and the second batch. I think it took like two or three batches to really get them really active and really given a good flavor of kefir. So um, sometimes that can be the case. So if you do order your own grains and that happens, don't give up. Don't give up at all. Discard the first couple of batches if you have to. Keep the grains, start again, and after a few times your, the flavor will start to get to where it needs to be and you will start enjoying it. So um, just thought I'd mention that because I know people sometimes will think, okay, well this is not working right, right away, and they just throw it all out. Don't do that. Um, hang in there, it will work out. Kefir grains are pretty hardy. Um, they're hard to kill. And um, yeah, so sometimes they just need a little, little extra love and a little nudge to try and get them kind of going again where they should be. All right, so we're going to get our um, kefir strained off, get our grains, and we're going to start a new batch. I'm going to show you how simple it is. And I have some kefir cheese in the background that's straining off and it's ready. So I'm going to show you the kefir cheese and we will probably put this batch on um, to make kefir cheese with this as well. And I'll show you how simple it is. So let's get started. I'm just kind of going to give this a little stir because sometimes the kefir, you will get a little bit of settling at the bottom. Um, that's fine, but see how nice and thick this is. All right, oops. So I'm just gonna strain it through and I just strain it into a, a measuring cup for now. I'll uh, transfer this to a jar after. So sometimes there's um, a lot of sort of thickened milk product in the grains that you just kind of uh, push through. So this is kefir grains. So they kind of look like, I don't know, like little pieces of cauliflower or um, kind of cottage cheesy maybe. So that's it. That's what a kefir, a milk kefir grain looks like. You can do a water kefir too with water kefir grains. I've never done it. I don't know anything about it. Um, I just know uh, dairy milk kefir. All right, so we're gonna get our kefir grains into our new jar. I had a smaller jar out. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, because this is gonna be a full batch of kefir, I need the bigger jar. So um, I need enough to cover, to fill with three cups of milk. Now, um, this is a bit of overkill actually, but I don't have a quart jar right now. I'm so low on quart jars, I really gotta get another case of them. Um, so we'll use this one. But um, yeah, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna put our kefir grains in to our jar. Make sure you get all of them because they're all good. So you can see the kefir grains down in the bottom there, probably. And we're going to top it up with about three cups of milk. So I should say, um, when I got my kefir grains from Kefir Garden, they recommended one teaspoon of kefir grains to one and a half cups of milk. I find that a little tiny bit too, um, too little kefir grains, we'll say. I prefer to have a few more grains um, than that. I just found it wasn't quite uh, strong enough and flavorful enough. So 
This is about three teaspoons of grains here now, and I'm gonna put three cups of milk. So I'm gonna say about a teaspoon per one cup. There's all kinds of literature or instructions online. Like you can really, there's no hard and fast rule. Some people will say a tablespoon like per cup or whatever. Like some people, like it really depends and it really kind of, uh, I don't think you can really go wrong uh, with too many. I think it might just ferment faster. So just be wary of that. And um, you know, if you don't really like the flavor, try adjusting the amount of grains per milk and see what, you know, how that uh, does for you. I'm gonna grab my measuring cup. Of course, my big one is there. So we're gonna do three cups. So I just have a whole milk here. This is an organic milk because of course, like I said, we can't get raw milk here in this province at all, legally. So there is two cups. and three cups and that is it we'll give it a little stir just to kind of get those grains around there a bit and that's it um don't know what i got done with the cover to this all right so we're going to put the cover on um i don't put the cover on tight i just kind of just lay it over the top pretty much some people will just put a coffee filter or something over it or a cheesecloth I do prefer to have a cover on it, but I don't like to have it tight. Now again, the instructions I got from Kiefer Garden was to have it tight. Um, not my preference. I prefer to have any kind of ferments sort of somewhat exposed because it also takes in some of the natural um, uh, good bacteria in the air around you. The only thing to note, if you do do a lot of ferments, um, and you have a small kitchen like mine, make sure they're separated by at least um, four feet because they can kind of interact with each other, I'll say, or they can take on um, flavors or bacteria from the other ferment and, and interfere with it. So it's best to have them separate. So this will go over on my counter and I'm gonna date it and time it. And this will be at least 24 hours. Um, Usually that's around the sweet spot. Now, sometimes if you have really active, um, if you have really active grains, it might ferment faster. And sometimes if your house is really warm, it'll ferment faster. If it's really cold, it might take longer. Don't usually go longer than 48 hours. So kind of anywhere between 24 and 36 seems to be the sweet spot at our house um, for flavor and just, you know, good fermentation. And if you over ferment it, don't worry. If you forget about it for a couple of days, don't worry about it. Just strain it off and give it to your animals or give it to your chickens or your pigs or whatever you got. They'll love it. And um, start again. No big deal at all. So that's it. This is going to go over to sit and ferment. So now we're going to grab our cheese and I'm going to show you how to um, take care of kefir cheese. All right, so here is our kefir cheese um, hanging here into a bowl. So you can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera, yes, you should be able to, all the way in the bowl. Um, this is probably not the ideal setup. There's all sorts of different setups. And in fact, I tried a different method um, the other day. I don't know if I have a picture. If I have a picture, I'll sub it in. But basically, I had my cheesecloth tied to a wooden... Um, spoon and I had it in top like kind of lodged over a really tall jar and I put the jar in the fridge I thought I would strain it in the fridge because I have read that that sometimes makes a creamier um, cream cheese but it didn't really work out for me very well because the only place in our fridge that this tall jar would fit was right next to the ice box and it actually froze and it stopped straining so kind of sucked but anyway it is what it is. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do it out at room temperature because that's sort of the standard. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I rigged up this. I just kind of tied, you know, some um, string around the cheesecloth and hung it. And just as long as the, the cheese is not, you know, it's not um, settled down into the whey, obviously, because you want the whey to drip from the cheesecloth. 
So we're going to grab this now and we'll go back over and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so you can see that. So this is our cheesecloth with our cheese in it. So it's kind of, you can see the dents that's staying in it. So it's, it's very much a formed uh, soft cheese. So I'm going to put that aside. Of course, my hands are clean when I'm doing this. Make sure of that. You don't want to contaminate. So this is the way. So this is what actually strained off of our kefir to make the cheese. So this is not garbage. Um, you can actually use this way in a bunch of different ways. <laughs> you can, well, one, you can feed it to your animals. If you have animals, this is great probiotic for them as well. I see a little piece of cheesecloth down in there, a little, a little uh, shred of cheesecloth string. So it's not super clear way, you can see, because some of the yogurty uh, kefir did strain through. So if you want a clear way, you can strain that off again. Um, that's totally up to you. Some people drink this just like that. Um, I don't, but you can. There's nothing wrong with it. It's full of great probiotics. You can substitute this in recipes. If a recipe calls for milk or water, you can use the whey instead. Um, you can use this as a ferment, like to start another fermentation. If you want to do uh, like a vegetable ferment, you can use some of this whey as a starter. So there's all kinds of different things you can do with that. So really that's not, don't throw it out at, at the very least give it to your animals. They will love it and their guts will love it as well. So let's check out our cheese. So this is just a 90 count, I think, 90 thread count um, cheesecloth that I use. So it's a pretty thick cheesecloth and I use two layers. Um, so let's kind of see how this looks. All right, so you can see that it's very cheese-like. All right, so you can see the texture is still really soft. It's like a soft cream cheese almost, um, or like a super, super thick yogurt. It's got a really good flavor to it. This is like fabulous on just crackers with some hot pepper jelly or um, some, you know, good homemade jam, anything like that. Just delicious. So you can substitute this on all kinds of different things. You can, like I said, you can um, alter the consistency for what you want based on how much you strain it. So this was strained for 24 hours. So this is what it looks like after 24 hours. Um, you can strain it a little bit less if you want more of a Greek yogurt, or you can strain it for even longer if you want it even thicker. If you want to make it more like a, a ricotta cheese or something a lot drier, you can actually um, sort of keep it in your cheesecloth or even put it in a fresh cheesecloth and press out the remaining whey to make it drier rather than letting it drip. So this is just strictly letting it drip. Um, so yeah, you can really alter the consistency and this is just a great substitute because it's so, so rich in, like I said, all those probiotics and good gut health and gut friendly bacteria, fabulous. Um, so if you also, I should mention, if you don't wanna use this plain, you can make this into like an herbed cream cheese. You can add some herbs to this. Um, I've seen people make like cheesecakes with this. So I'm really, really excited about what we can do with this. This is like fabulous for our kitchen, I have to say. And it's all homemade. All right, so I'll just show you quickly how I set myself up to um, strain the kefir to make cheese. So basically we have a bowl. I usually prefer my taller bowl, but um, I didn't get, I didn't clean that one up yet. So I'll do this just for the video. I'll switch it out after, but you're also going to need a strainer <clears throat> and a piece of cheesecloth. And you're going to want good cheesecloth, like a good uh, thick weave cheesecloth. This is like I said, 90 count. 
Um, you can also use coffee filters. I've seen people like lay out coffee filters. Um, I just prefer cheesecloth. And you're just going to pour your kefir right over your cheesecloth gently. Now this cheesecloth is my last clean piece, but it's very small. So I've got to be very cautious with this. All right. So I don't tie this up right away. Um, I let this sit for probably maybe a couple of hours like this um, and let it strain a little bit first before I tie it up because if you try to tie it up right away sometimes it could be messy. Now if I had a bigger piece of cheesecloth I could probably do it. But basically all I do to tie it up after it starts straining is I just kind of gather it and I tie my string around it and um, just hang it like that. Like I said, you can tie this to a wooden spoon and put it um, on top of a deep jar or something of that nature. Totally up to you. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new and I hope this inspires you to try to make your own kefir at home um, and maybe some kefir cheese now that you see how simple it is. Um, I should know, you can put your kefir grains sort of to sleep for a while, we'll say. Um, there's different things you can do. You can freeze your kefir grains, you can dehydrate your kefir grains and rehydrate them after. Um, if it's just for a few days and you don't want to make any kefir, you can just put your grains in some milk in the fridge and just to kind of keep them awake and activate it, sort of, so to speak. Um, my understanding, and I haven't tried this method, but my understanding is if you want to keep it sort of for weeks on end, you can put it, put your kefir grains in some fresh spring or good filtered water, not tap water, no chlorine again, um, but you can do that and put them in the fridge as well. And that'll kind of keep them hydrated and sort of just, you know, uh, I want to say asleep, but sort of settled in, and asleep, I guess, not really active. Um, but the main thing is it'll keep it hydrated and when you go to use them again now you may have to do a batch or two just to get them well activated again but that is another method so you can store them you don't have to be you you know making them every single day making kefir every single day just so you know um, but yeah that's it for today's video um, I hope you enjoyed it take care and we'll see you again on the next one bye